Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is the Weather Extreme video. This is the morning edition for the 1st of April, April Fools. Uh, we've got uh, pretty quiet weather through midweek. Storms at the end of the week. Uh, severe weather west of the state. I'd say it's still unlikely here. Then another uh, interesting system late this weekend and early next week. It's very active, and that's what you expect this time of the year. So let's go in there and take a look. Uh, this is the water vapor satellite view across the nation. Very intense storm is rotating up into Canada. Uh, that's the one that brought blizzard conditions to parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota yesterday and last night. And we're kind of catching the tail end of that thing, as you can see, early this morning. That was the uh, radar screen grab at 5 o'clock. And, and some of that might be reaching the ground, uh, but most of it is not. And it's fading fast. And by the time you watch this, most all of that will be gone. So we're not going to mention uh, uh, rain today in the forecast for the uh, rest of the day and tonight. Starting off the day in the 50s for the most part, the range is from 46 at Fort Payne to 60 in Birmingham. We'll expect a high in the upper 70s today. Some folks will probably touch 80, kind of like yesterday. Around the nation, noticeably colder behind that blizzard up north, but uh, that cold air will not affect us. Uh, in fact, we'll see highs around 80 really every day for the rest of this week. On the watch warning map this morning, pretty quiet. Uh, still some winter storm issues over Minnesota. That system is winding down. Other than that, nice and quiet. Later today and tonight, there uh, are a couple of slight severe weather risks. One near Kansas City, one near Wichita Falls, Texas. But tomorrow, things become more active. This is the day two convective outlook. This is for Wednesday. Tomorrow, a, a standard slight risk from near Dallas-Fort Worth up to St. Louis. The higher severe weather probabilities tomorrow are over Kansas and Missouri. And this will probably be your most active day. This is the day three outlook. This is for Thursday and Thursday night. The standard slight risk of severe weather from East Texas up to about Indianapolis. And that does include the northwestern corner of Alabama for a line of storms that will likely arrive after midnight Thursday night. And we'll talk much more about this in just a moment. The, uh, there is an enhanced risk, a 30% zone uh, that includes all of Arkansas, western Tennessee, up into uh, western Kentucky, southern Illinois, and southern Missouri. Uh, some of the cities in the enhancement would be Little Rock, Memphis, Greenville, Mississippi, Paducah, Kentucky. And uh, again, uh, the, no doubt there could be some pretty significant action in there Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. So if you live it there, be aware of that. And then beyond that, there's no risk on, uh, on Friday. And I think that is the correct call. Here's the rain for the next seven days. I thought I'd stretch this out through the middle of next week. And uh, we've got a lot of rain coming. And really, the biggest rain could be early next week with this uh, little wave coming out of the Gulf, as you'll see. Uh, but uh, clearly, we should see some very respectable uh, rain amounts over the next seven days. And then again, you know, this is the wettest time of the year, March and April. It's not that unusual. Look at modeling. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid at noon today. This is at 500 millibars, strong troughing over the Great Lakes. That's moving up into Canada. Energy coming into the West Coast. But down below that, this should be a nice day. Uh, we'll say a mixture of clouds and sunshine, the high in the upper 70s today. Some folks may be touching 80. Tomorrow, again, should be a pretty nice day. Uh, I think we'll see highs uh, up around 80 tomorrow. Curiously, the uh, NAM pulls the high down to 71. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the GFS is at 83. Pretty odd to see a 12-degree discrepancy in modeling, but we'll clearly roll with the GFS. Uh, there's your storm coming out of the uh, uh, Colorado Rockies. The surface low is developing down around uh, Dalhart, Texas, Trinidad, Colorado. And again, there could be some severe weather out in the warm sector ahead of the dry line with that. 
But again, this is the day where things should really begin to shake and bake. This is Thursday. A very significant trough is coming out of the Rockies, and uh, the surface low is down to 1,000 millibars north of Oklahoma City. And uh, let's go to Thursday night. Late. This is 1 a.m. Friday, just after midnight Thursday night, and this is when things should be shaking and baking. Uh, that deep surface low is over northern Missouri with a, a trailing batch of storms down into Arkansas and Louisiana, approaching Memphis. And uh, more than likely, uh, late Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, there could be some supercells with tornadoes uh, in that zone, Arkansas, Missouri. And then late Thursday night, more than likely, it rolls over into a long squall line, QLCS, Quasi-Linear Convective System. And uh, those, will, those storms will likely enter the northwestern corner of the state sometime after midnight Thursday night, early Friday morning. Um, and then this is just after uh, noon. This is 1 o'clock Friday afternoon. Surface low is down to 992 millibars with a trailing batch of showers and storms. But you can see things are kind of fizzling out down here as the main dynamic support uh, pulls away from us. Uh, but clearly there could be some severe weather maybe north of Alabama Friday, closer to that deep surface low up there. Uh, all right, let's look at the uh, some of the other maps here. This is the upper support. This is at 500 millibars. You can see the, the better dynamic support is north of the state, uh, clearly on Friday. Here's the instability. And uh, again, this is the most unstable air we've seen all year. It's been pretty cold all year. Uh, but this is suggesting there could be a few spots down in southwest Alabama where the surface-based cape exceeds 2,000 joules per kilogram. And uh, most everybody else with cape values in excess of 1,500 joules which is significant. Uh, no doubt about that. The air is going to be buoyant in advance of that front. And again, uh, uh, Friday at midday, the, the front should be over the northwestern corner of the state. But the shear values are very unimpressive. This is the bulk shear but between the surface and 925 millibars, and they're just kind of fading away on Friday. Uh, so the tornado threat looks low. And this is the wind fields, the core of the low-level jet. And this is at about 5,000 feet where the pressure is 850 millibars. Again, those higher winds of uh, 50 knots are, are well to the northeast of Alabama. So I think what's going to happen, we'll have a squall line that could be severe during the pre-dawn hours Friday, maybe you know, 2, 3, 3 o'clock in the morning, entering northwest Alabama. And up around Florence and the Shoals, there could be some strong wind gusts. And I wouldn't be shocked if severe thunderstorm warnings were needed. And then more than likely, the line of storms weakens as it moves on to the south, and by the time it reaches us Friday morning, uh, it, it should be non-severe. That's the way it looks now. But, hey, it's April. You know, when it comes to thunderstorms, what do you do? Expect the unexpected. We'll keep a close eye on things. But for now, it just doesn't – severe weather doesn't look to be a big problem down here. All right, weekend fans. This is Saturday. The surface boundary is in deep south Alabama. Uh, still raining Saturday, potentially around Mobile and Dothan, where the front stalls out just north of there. But we should be in a dry air mass, and uh, Saturday should be cooler. The high could be in the upper 60s on Saturday. We'll say the high around 70 with a north breeze. Sunday at 1 o'clock, the GFS is dry, but it, note, it does develop a surface wave in the western gulf. And watch what happens, all right? This is Monday morning at 6 o'clock. Boom. A deepening surface low. That thing's under 1,000 millibars is, is down around Demopolis. And that would suggest a soaking rain in here Sunday night and Monday. Uh, we'll check the European solution just for the fun of it. This is Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock, and it's got the rain back in here. And the, the Europeans been very consistent in this idea. And now that both models are on board with a wave coming out of the uh, uh, western Gulf, uh, out of respect to... The fact the European was on this earlier, I think we'll go ahead and bring in the chance of some rain Sunday afternoon. It could be Sunday night before the rain gets here. And then uh, this is Monday morning at 6 o'clock off the European. It's got the surface low farther north, and that would suggest maybe some thunderstorms uh, early Monday morning. Uh, I, you know, we'll have to watch for potential for strong storms. If the GFS is right, it's just good old-fashioned rain. If the European is right, there could be some thunderstorms involved. We'll... Watch and see how this plays out in coming days. But clearly, that looks like a very wet period. Late Sunday, Sunday night, and Monday will amend the forecast to include that. And this is Tuesday. Look at the trough developing over the east. Watch out now, growers. It's too early to plant anything that's going to be harmed by a freeze or frost. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, down below that, another big nor'easter is up around Long Island. 
Uh, boy, if that's right, that'd be a big snow for uh, maybe some of the interior parts of New England. And this is suggesting maybe some lingering light rain down here Tuesday. And then look at Thursday of next week. This is April 10th. Uh, again, ridging to the west, troughing over the east. We've seen that all winter. And the 540 line down to Montgomery and by golly, that would suggest, yep, a frost or a freeze toward the middle or end of next week. So I just think if you want to be safe, you'd wait until a maybe tax day, April 15th. That's strong advice from your old pal that does these weather videos here. Here's the end of the forecast, April 17th. That looks pretty active. Uh, a uh, big surface cyclone winding up over Oklahoma. Maybe some severe weather with that. And a tropical-looking feature over the Bahamas, but we're kind of in between all of that. But as always, April promises to be an interesting month. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can't catch us this evening on ABC 3340 News, uh, the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.